Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to use something called vector resolution to add vectors. Now normally when we do this, we do this when we have more than two vectors. Because when we add vectors head to tail um, and there's only two, we have a triangle. If it's a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. If it's an acute or obtuse triangle, if you've already taken pre-calc, you could use law of cosines and law of sines. But we're going to learn how to do it for any triangle, even if we have three, four, five, that makes it really, really simple. So this is the method that we're going to use. So first of all, each vector you have, you're going to resolve each of the vectors to be added into its x and y components. Now you have to be careful if something's positive or negative. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add up all the x components and all the y components, and then we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant, and then we're going to find tangent to do the angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this as an example. Instead of going through this work, I'm just going to do it from scratch. So it says find the resultant of the force vectors illustrated below. So I have three vectors, and I want to find the resultant of those three. So I'll do this on a piece of paper, and this is the example. So it's already worked out in your notes, just follow along. So first, I'm going to take each vector individually. So here's vector A, and vector A looks like this. The magnitude of vector A here, this A, they tell me that this is 60 newtons, and then they tell me that the angle here is 30 degrees. Now remember, components of vectors, those are always added head to tail. So here, one's always going to go horizontal. From the head of this one, I do the tail of the other one. That one's vertical. So this is going to be A subscript X, and this is A subscript Y. And they told me this angle here is 30 degrees. Now, again, this is a right triangle. So I can use definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. If you don't remember, just start with the beginning and say, well, I know sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So when I look at my picture here, a sub y is opposite, a sub x is adjacent, so I know that sine of 30 is going to be adjacent, if, or if I want to do the sine, so sine of 30 is opposite a sub y over the hypotenuse, which is 60, so a sub y is equal to 60 times the sine of 30. Now when I take my calculator, I press 30, then I press sine, which is 0.5 times 60 equals, so that comes out to be 30 newtons, and that's positive. Now remember, I always need to be aware of my sine convention. So in this class, we're always again going to do up and to the right is positive. So this goes to the right, so this is positive 30. Now when I do a sub, it goes up, so it's positive. So now when I do the x part, I can either write the definition of cosine. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 30 is equal to adjacent a sub x over the hypotenuse 60, so a sub x is equal to 60 times the cosine of 30. So again, I take my calculator and I press 30 cosine times 60 equals, and I get 51.96, so I'm just going to call that 52. Now this is positive, and I know the direction, whether it's positive or negative, by looking at my picture. So you have to have a picture. Now I'm going to do the same thing for B. So when I look at vector B, if I look at my original picture, B goes down like this. This is B, and they said that B is 30 newtons. So I want to do my components. Remember, they're head to tail. So this is going to be BX and this is going to be by. And then they told us that this angle was 45 degrees. Now, you notice right away that by goes down, so that's going to be negative, and then this goes to the right, so that's going to be positive. So now bx is going to be cosine of 45, and by is equal to b sine of 
sine of 45. Now, when it's 45 degrees, sine and cosine is the same thing. But remember, by is opposite the 45 degree angle. That's why it's sine. And bx is adjacent to the given angle. That's why it's cosine. So when I do that on my calculator, this one comes out to be plus 21. But remember, I can see this one's negative, so that one's going to be negative 21 newtons. And again, you want to substitute in your value. So bx is going to be um, 30 newtons times the cosine of 45, and then this one's 30 newtons times the sine. All right, so we have one vector left. We have vector c. Now, vector c looks like this. This one is on the x-axis. It's all horizontal. So this doesn't have a horizontal and vertical component. So I can just look at it and say, well, cx is equal to negative 20. It's negative because it's going to the left. And then it has no y component because it's all x. So this is just 0. So now I, find the, I found all the components of my vectors. Now what I'm going to do, and I didn't do this in the notes, I suggest you do a chart because it makes it really, really simple. And this way you won't make a mistake. So you have vector, then you have the x, and then you have the y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have vector a, vector b, vector c, and then I'm going to have my resultant. So I'm going to add up all my x's. So ax is 52, positive, and you have to be careful with the sign. bx is positive 21, and cx is negative 20. ay is positive 30. by is negative 21, and then cy is 0. Now I'm going to add this column up, and this is going to give me Rx. Then I'm going to add this column up, and this is going to give me Ry. So when I add these up, 52 plus 21 minus 20, that comes out to be 53, and it's positive. And then this one, 30 minus 21, is going to be positive 9. So now I have my Rx and my Ry, but I don't want Rx and Ry, I want R. Now I have to look at the magnitudes of this. So Rx is 53. So what I would do is I would draw a picture. Just so I can, so let's say this is Rx, and it's positive 53, so I drew it to the right. From the head of this vector, I do the tail of the other one, but this one's 9, so I'm not doing it to scale, but... You know, I'm obviously making this one a lot smaller than this. Now, remember, this is positive, so it goes to the right. This one is positive, so it goes up. From where I start to where I end up, that's going to be my resultant. So this is plain old R. Remember, Rx, this is Ry. And to get my resultant, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So r is equal to the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. So I'm going to substitute in my values. So 53 newtons squared plus 9 newtons squared. So r ends up being 54 newtons. Am I finished? No. And I'm not finished because, remember, vectors have both magnitude and direction. And this is only the magnitude, which is a number and a unit, and now I need the direction. So to get the direction, how should I do it? Well, I always measure the direction from the tail, the resultant, and if I do it inside the triangle, it makes it easy. So I have what's opposite and I have what's adjacent, so opposite over adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to say tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So in my diagram, opposite is r sub y over r sub x. So tan of theta is equal to 9 newtons over 53 newtons. The newtons cancel. So now on my calculator, I'm going to say 9 divided by 53 equals, and that comes out to a decimal, 0.198, but that's tan of theta. I don't want the tan of theta. I want theta. So I press second tan, and I get 9.63 degrees. So theta is equal to 9.6 degrees. Now remember, this is the angle I measured, 
So my final answer for this is going to be R is equal to 54 newtons at 9.6 degrees. And this angle here, this is north of east. And that's my final answer. Now, this might look like a lot of work, but if you just do it step by step, the math is actually pretty simple. But you, have, you can't take shortcuts. You can't do stuff in your head. You notice that every time I draw a picture here, it helps to visualize it. So I drew my picture of vector A, found my horizontal and vertical components. I drew my picture of vector B, I found my horizontal and vertical components. For C, I saw it went to the left. Now, the table makes it a lot simpler when you have a problem a little bit more complicated like this. So with the table, I can just add up my x's and my y's. Then for my resultant, once I have rx and ry, these are head to tail. I have the resultant. I use the Pythagorean theorem. I use tangent to find the angle. And then again, I need to specify the direction because vectors have both magnitude and direction, and the angle isn't sufficient. I also need to look at what the direction is.